Hi there, today's video is about MTOW or maximum takeoff weight. By the end of this video, you will know what the maximum takeoff weight is and what is the difference between the maximum takeoff weight or MTOW and the regulated takeoff weight or RTOW. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot. So consider subscribing to the channel so you will not miss the next video. Before starting into this topic, leave in the comment below any questions you may have throughout the today's content because for me it's extremely important you get 100% of the uh, topic, alright? So let's jump into the maximum takeoff weight or MTOW. The maximum takeoff weight is the highest aircraft weight when ready for takeoff, okay? It's certified by the manufacturer and is the highest weight that you can have with your aircraft when ready for departure, okay? This uh, uh, maximum takeoff weight has been done by the manufacturer throughout the certification. There are a lot of limits inside the maximum takeoff weight and why we've got a specific maximum takeoff weight for a specific aircraft, okay? But the most important factor that actually affect your maximum takeoff weight are mainly the structural limitations that basically assure that if you fly below the maximum takeoff weight, your aircraft structure, your aircraft fuselage and wings will not be damaged throughout your operations, okay? Let's say you're you're, you're flying and then you encounter some turbulence or you do some very rough maneuvers due to a wind shear, for example, that will actually ensure that your aircraft structure will not be damaged uh, if you fly below the maximum takeoff weight. But as well as we've got a performance limitation that uh, uh, limits your maximum takeoff weight that basically ensures that your aircraft can always provide you with a, a minimum climb gradient, especially in the first part of your, uh, of your takeoff, with one engine or two engines, okay? So this is the maximum takeoff weight. It's something that the manufacturer actually certified the plane, is written in your flight manual, and it doesn't change with your outside conditions, okay? So that means that, for example, the 737 that I've been flying has got a maximum takeoff weight of 78 tons, 78,000 kilograms, more or less, approximately. So this is a, a number that is always there, okay? It doesn't change if today is raining, if it's sunny or cloudy, if it's cold or warm, high pressure, low pressure. It's a maximum takeoff weight. So you have to respect this. You cannot take off above that, okay? Even though you take off with an higher maximum uh, takeoff weight, which is not recommended, you should never do that. However, don't imagine that if you take off with that, uh, a weight that is above that, the aircraft will fall apart. It's not, it's not like that. However, by flying below this number, this maximum takeoff weight, you will ensure that the aircraft will not, that the aircraft structure will not be damaged. Okay. So as you know now, your actual takeoff weight has to be below your maximum takeoff weight. However, let me ask you a question: What will happen if you take off from a very short runway? Even though you might be below your maximum takeoff weight, you, you maybe the runway is so short that will limit your takeoff weight even more. Okay. So even though let's say your maximum takeoff weight the certified one is below 78 tons, so in that day you have 75 tons for departure, so you're fine. That's not really exactly as it is, okay? When you take off, you need to make sure that the ambient conditions, the weather, the runway length, the runway conditions, and all the external factors are such that your actual takeoff will be below the regulated takeoff weight, okay? The regulated takeoff weight is the takeoff weight that comes out, the maximum takeoff weight that comes out after you take into consideration all the external factors, such as performance, aircraft configurations, running states, running length, and so on, okay? So what you have to make sure is that your actual takeoff weight is below the certified maximum takeoff weight and or the regulated takeoff weight, okay? The performance takeoff weight, okay? So let's say that today the regulated takeoff weight is 70 tons and your maximum takeoff weight, the certified one, is 78 tons. That means that your limitation for today will be the regulated one because it's lower. So you don't care about the certified takeoff weight, but you only care about the performance takeoff weight because it's a lower limitation. Okay, so this is very important to understand the difference between the certified maximum takeoff weight and the regulated takeoff weight, okay? So you need to make sure to cross-check those. When you are calculating your takeoff weight, there is another thing you need to take into consideration. You need to take into consideration your landing weight because the landing weight has got a maximum certified landing weight, which is the one certified by the manufacturer, and then you have a regulated landing weight that is the maximum landing weight that you can have 
taking into consideration the external factors, the aircraft configuration, the runway state, the, the, runway, the runway conditions, the runway length, the visibility, the, sorry, not the visibility, the temperature, the pressure, and so on. Okay, so these two uh, landing ways, these two limitations has to be taken into consideration when calculating the takeoff weight as well. Because let me give you an example. Let's say that today your takeoff weight will be 70 tons, okay? And your trip fuel to go from A to B will be 2 tons. So you will take off with 70 tons and you will arrive at your destination with 2 tons of fuel less. So you will land at destination with 68 tons, okay? Let's imagine that your maximum landing weight is 65 tons, okay? What happens is that you will take off and you will reach your destination having 68 tons, that's 3 tons above your maximum landing weight. And that you should not do that, You're not, you cannot do that, okay? Because the landing weight, again, is a structure limitation or is a performance limitation, okay? Depending if you're using the maximum landing weight or the regulated landing weight. So what you have to do when calculating the takeoff weight, you have to think about, okay, what's my uh, uh, takeoff limitation? Is it the regulated one or is it the certified one? Okay, let's say it's the limit one, sorry, the, the regulated one. Then, okay, I'll take the regulated one and I'll make sure my takeoff weight is below. Then you think about what's my maximum landing weight? Is this one. After I subtract my trip fuel, I have to make sure that I will land there with less than, uh, with my landing weight, below the maximum landing weight, okay? So there are a lot of things you have to consider when uh, calculating the takeoff weight, okay? In my experience, it happened to me that I had to do a long flight and the runway was not long enough to allow me to take off with the, all the fuel that I needed and all the passengers and cargo that I needed. Let's say you want to go from, let's say, London to Marrakesh, okay? So you are in London, let's say you, London is a short runway, so you do your calculations, taking into account the pressure, the temperature, the wind, and everything, and then you check and they, that, that performance there, the, that environment, that weather, will give you a regulated takeoff weight of, let's say, 65 tons. So the limitation there is the performance one. So you know you have to take off with the, a takeoff weight below 65. You, you check how much fuel you need to go from London to Marrakesh. You check how many passengers you've got. And then you check the aircraft weight. And you figure it out that you've got actually 68 tons for departure. Okay. So what will happen there is that you are 3 tons heavier than, than your uh, regulated takeoff weight. And that's, you cannot do that. Okay. So then you have two options, whether you leave passengers behind with the bags and everything, which is very bad. And I mean, how can you say to somebody you're going to fly and then somebody else you cannot fly? Okay, based on what? And then there is the second option and it's the one that I've been always using it. Okay, and that you take off from London, for example. And instead of trying to go all the way down to Marrakesh, you try you go from London to Madrid, for example, you do a technical stop. Okay, and then from Madrid, you load the fuel and then you do the flight Madrid Marrakesh. Okay, in that case, you're going to split your aircraft, your sorry, your flight into two flights you're gonna have a flight plan from the London to Madrid okay with less fuel so you'll be lighter and your takeoff weight will be below your regulated takeoff weight you land in Madrid you burn fuel sorry you load the fuel and then you do another flight from Madrid all the way down to Marrakesh okay all right, I hope you like this video about MTOW or maximum takeoff weight and regulated takeoff weight. If you like the video, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to make a lot of content, so in this way you will not miss the next video. Okay, go as well to paloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paloclimb training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.